Nabil, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Thank you very much for having me. Now, you know, a lot of people say, you know, I feel stressed out or I'm experiencing a lot of stress. This is a stressful situation. Do you think that we're living in a time in which stress has increased? Yeah, I think that's a, a really good question. Um, we know that in the Quran, that there are stories in which the Prophet uh, or the Prophets were asking Allah for for so much help, and they were saying, "When will the help of Allah come?" So, if we compare ourselves to that which the Prophets experienced, I think we would come to the conclusion that you know stress is very relative. It's relative to how we experience it, right? And uh, and the Prophets experienced a lot of stress uh, relative to what it is that they could handle and the resiliency that they had. Um, so, I think in today's age, stress has different connotations and almost like different textures mm -hmm. in which we experience it, right? So what, what do you think causes stress these days? Right. Um, so I think stress in its essence is really our body's internal fight or flight response uh, that we have to external events, right? Mm -hmm. And so stress is very much relative. So some things that might stress you out might not necessarily stress me out. So something that causes me stress might be like a life transition, whether that's a loss of a job, uh, maybe a divorce or an illness or coming to a new country. Um, but something that might stress you out could be like public speaking. Mm -hmm. It could be making a meal for your in-laws. It could even be getting out of the parking lot during Jummah prayers, right? Mm -hmm. So stress is relative to the person who experiences it. Um, but what's really, really important to understand that it's a response to external events that sort of you know, determines the impact that stress has in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, so how can we how can we figure out how to have that proper response to stress? I mean, right. you're in the moment and you feel stressed out. You know, what do you do? Can you control it? Absolutely, right. So, so what what makes stress makes you feel is that it's uncontrollable, mm -hmm. is that it's unpredictable, and that it's going to last forever. But we know that stress in its nature is meant to be temporary. So when stress becomes long term, it's only because we're not able to manage stress in its most appropriate uh, ways. So for example, to manage our stressors, we first need to realize that it's not about controlling external events which might trigger stress, right? We have been almost inundated to deal with stress with anxiety, right? Our response to stress has always been anxiety. It's about worrying about what's gonna happen. It's about feeling overwhelmed about what's happening right now. So the best way to manage stress is really to understand ourselves better, understand how it is that we are responding to stress, learning from how the prophets you know, responded to stress, how much conviction they might have had in the belief that you know, this is going to pass. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and when you have that conviction, then it empowers you to not necessarily deal with the stressors from from external sources, right? So if you're stre if you're dealing with stress when it's job related, you know mm -hmm. you're not thinking that oh when I get the job then I won't be stressed, right? You must come to the conclusion that it's my thoughts, feelings that I have when I am not getting a job, and mm -hmm. those are things that I can control. Uh, for example, if I'm not able to find employment, am I thinking that I, my self worth is impacted? Am I mm -hmm. thinking about financial obligations too much? You know, you're thinking so much about the future that you're not able to actually enjoy the present and the moment. Mm -hmm. So one of the best ways to deal with stress is to put ourselves in the moment and just be present in what's happening. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you said that because I was just thinking as you spoke that you know you can rationalize it and say, oh, this is how I should deal with stress. But then when you're in the moment, it's almost like something else takes over, right? And then right. you don't, you know, you're you're not in control of it anymore. Absolutely, because what stress does, you know, it's the fight and flight response in your brain. So it's the part of your brain that you know looks at fear. And, and looks at a threat and says, this threat is real, and so you must act right now. So, you know, stress makes us act immediately. Mm -hmm. The challenge being we act much more emotionally in situations than we do rationally. Right? Mm -hmm. and so one of the ways to manage stress, and as cliche as it sounds, is, is really just to, to breathe, right? Because what is breathing? When you're breathing and you're taking those deep belly breathing breaths, all you're doing is allowing yourself not to think about anything else but just the most essential thing to life, which is breathing. So by breathing, you're normalizing your body to just be present in the moment. Mm -hmm. And so when you, all these thoughts are coming and racing through your mind, you have to fight that urge to not think about what, you know, all these catastrophic thoughts, 
breathing is a great way to, to ground you in, in the present. And when you ground yourself in the present, you know, then you're able to reflect on, oh, these are the stories that are in the Quran about how people dealt with stress, about how people dealt with their worries, about how people had conviction and faith that God's going to guide them to wherever it is that they need to be. Uh, and, you know, this is where the hadith is so impactful. You know, when God, what the Prophet ﷺ said, that have faith in God, but tie your camel, mm -hmm. right? So stress is all about having this conviction that things will work out in the future, but at the same time, holding yourself accountable to manage your stress better, to know that you know breathing is an activity that you can do to not feel overwhelmed, to know that sleeping well is an important characteristic of people who are able to better deal with stress, meditating, prayer is an important characteristic, social activities. So when you hold yourself accountable in positions when you're experiencing a lot of stress and you have the conviction that God's gonna get you through whatever you're experiencing, that's a great, balance between the spiritual and the practical and you know that's one of the ways in which we can manage and handle our stress. Mm -hmm. You know some people experience um, extreme situations in which it, you know it's impossible to think of them not being stressed out right? Right. Can you tell us a little bit about that situation and those sorts of situations and how someone um, how we can deal with that situation as in a community on a community level? Absolutely right so I think when it comes to stress you know, and external environments that sort of exacerbate how much stress we mm -hmm. experience in life. You know, in Toronto, we consider Toronto to be one of the most multicultural cities in the world. You know, then it's astounding to know that 55% of racialized minorities, people of color, make under $30,000, right? Mm -hmm. So poverty is racialized. Poverty is a big factor in how much ex stress a person or a community experiences, right? So, so external events and limited access to resources in any given community will act as a catalyst for stressful events to happen in a person's life, right? If you live in a low-income neighborhood, you're gonna be over-policed, racially profiled, and the crime rates are gonna be high. You might be living in, an, in, a, in a house or an apartment that you know, is not necessarily up to code with you know, what a decent quality of life reflects. You might not have access to education or even a healthy grocery store around you, right? These are all factors that increases a person's stress that they experience. So these mm -hmm. environmental factors that we talked about makes it very, very difficult for them to necessarily deal with it because they're inundated with stressful events around, uh, around them. You know, one of the most important things as, as a community that we need to learn and, and recognize is that individuals in those precarious positions are marginalized. Their voices are taken away. So those in positions of privilege, Muslims in positions of privilege, who know how to deal with stress, who know how to, who, who have access to resources, they need to be the ones who advocate for those who don't have the voices, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm afraid to say that the solution is not necessarily to build more masjids, right? We don't need more infrastructure to handle stress better. We need to build better relationships with people. We need to learn that there's a disparity of experiences within the Muslim community of those who have resources, who have the ability and the resiliency to deal with the stressors and those who don't, right? And, and, and a community cannot progress forward if you're leaving those most vulnerable behind by not addressing the challenges that they experience. Thank you for sharing your thoughts, Nabil. I really appreciate it. No problem.